Okay, Pierre, it's time for your mid-season review, mate. And, well, I've got to say, I've got a few concerns about recent performances. Well, that's just it, mate. You keep beating me, and I've asked you repeatedly not to do that. Well, obviously, we're going to keep you for the rest of the year, mate. You're killing it. Hi guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome back to Aussie Villain Racing. Today we're in Holland, Fall Old Netherlands for the uh, Dutch Grand Prix. And uh, well, it's a halfway point of the championship, which means we need to make a decision on uh, on Pierre Gasly. And I don't think we need to think twice. Negotiate with teammate. We want Gasly to stay, don't we? So hopefully he feels the same way. And um, well, we'll just do 10 million. I don't know, why are we having to renegotiate mid-season? This is ridiculous. Let's just do the mid uh, the mid thing there. Surely he'll re-sign. I mean, where else is he going to go? So there we go. He is with us till the end of the season, and hopefully beyond that as well. But I don't know what happens if we... And if you do know, let me know. But if we were to offer him a lower deal, and he was to not accept it, what would that mean for... Uh, do we get a second chance to negotiate? Would he just leave the team? We'd have to get somebody else in. I, I don't really know what that means. Uh, but anyway, let's try and get these focused up a little bit more. And a press interview. Can we just get out of that? I don't really want to do that. Anyway, and then we're going to have a season break. Because apparently we've got a, a long gap between the two uh, the two races. It's uh, Hungary to... Uh, to oh, no, there is a winter break, isn't there? Naturally, but what would happen is that it would be Belgium that we'd be going to. But that didn't, of course, come up for us. Now, that leaves us $4 million to spend. That's not enough to get anything upgraded, I don't believe. Uh, do we, can we do something in the... Six million, no. Oh, hang on, we could upgrade the Wraith Craft Awareness and Focus if we upgrade the Fitness Center. I don't know if I want Gasly any better than he is. Let's try and upgrade the facilities for the car that helps us both. So we'll have to wait for next time. Now, we have, in theory, the best car on the grid right now. R&D in progress. We have a big uh, development coming in for the under veins. Now, that, of course, failed before the last race. So it's like almost like, well, it should be guaranteed this time. It should be absolutely uh, fine to come through. If we have a look at what we can do now... I believe, accept, what am I accepting? No idea what I just accepted. I believe that we are essentially maxed out now in terms of aerodynamics. So unless there's a rule change or something along those lines, uh, aerodynamics is as good as it's going to get for us. If we go across to the chassis side of things, we have a master cylinder, which would be an ultimate upgrade. And that's going to be increased braking performance. So that might be of interest to us. Uh, what have we got here? Hydraulic. So we've got some more chassis stuff we can do. So this is going to uh, weight distribution. Which might be interesting as well. Uh, what have we got here? We've got a front nose cone structure. Which is, again, it's a weight advantage. Another weight reduction. And suspension geometry. Which is going to reduce tire wear. So that's something to think about, isn't it? If we go to the powertrain, we don't have anything there it doesn't look like no there's still stuff that uh will come through eventually but we don't have just yet and then there is of course as we've had something else happen there there is of course the chance to do something in here is there no maybe not oh yes there is there's a mg uk failure thing so that is 1500 points and it's an ultimate upgrade as well i think i think we'd rather have car stuff wouldn't we and the brakes I mean, it's here first. We're, we're sort of two off the end on brakes, which makes me think maybe we want to do that. It is an ultimate upgrade still, but let's let's increase braking performance, and we should have that for the Italian Grand Prix, which would actually be a good thing, I think, wouldn't it? Because there's some heavy stops at those chicanes in the Italian Grand Prix, so that might uh, prove worthwhile for us. So that is going to be our lot for that. We go across to the vehicle. Everything is still in relatively good condition, which is excellent. Gearbox is still in good condition. Uh, the corporate side of things, nothing has changed there. The contract, well, we know that we've just done that, so that's uh, that's fine. Driver market, we don't have to worry about. I'm assuming everybody's going to stay put. I've never seen someone change mid-season, unless when we did it. I think we kicked out Swartzman. Sorry, we kicked out Markle off of Swartzman mid-season, I think. Did we not? Uh, so there we go. Finance history. We've uh, got the money in there for Gasly. So that has uh, taken a nosedive. Reminder of the championship standings. Gasly is 11 points ahead of me just now. Fifth and sixth we are in the championship. And as a team, we are sitting fourth. And we are further away from Ferrari in fifth. We're a lot closer to McLaren in third. So that is 
that's good, isn't it? It's good because we were a long way back in fifth last season behind Ferrari. So we're making we're making a big step forward, which is nice. Uh, we can see the season results there. Just the one win and uh, a couple of disappointing results for me. But Gasly's been consistent, hasn't he? Fourth, second, and second those last races. Now, last season or previous seasons in the Netherlands. Now, last year, if you remember, we had that dash to the line with... Um, who was it? Sonoda, I think. And we, like, tenths of a second, we missed out on points to finish 11th. The year before that, well, of course, we all know about Ocon Corner, where he uh, just took us out. The rivalry with Bottas is not going well. Um, and it's probably not going to get uh, much better right now, because Sandvoort is a track I have typically struggled at. Average finishing position 11th. We almost average in the points. Grid position is uh, 13th. So that's all heading in the right way. So let's get ahead now. Look, we'll skip ahead and see if anything else is going to go wrong. The nose turning veins are there. I don't really want to speak to you, Will, if I'm honest. So this should bring us now to the winter break. There we go. So we'll skip ahead. And uh, do we have activities we can add now? We do. Uh, and this is going to be the rest of the ones that we can do, isn't it? So we probably don't need to worry too much about this. Uh, it's that sort of unnatural gap there is in the calendar because we've dropped out the you know, from 20 something races down to 16 so that's all good and done we can uh, just back out of that in advance drive for promo filming is done we've got some power team building done there sponsor event hopefully nothing is going to go wrong here and we get to the dutch grand prix everything seems to be going well so let's head off all right so we have a track map of the zanvoort track if you are unfamiliar with it and the weather is looking good. A small chance of rain at the start of the race, but yeah, I mean, that's an 83% 80, chance of no rain. of good, 70 something percent. Anyway, you get 70% chance of rain. I'm going to go and do free practice. Hopefully, I'll get my eye in and we can uh, hit qualifying hard. All right, free practice is done. And now, as ever, that's on the Discord. I, I should have mentioned that sooner, but uh, yeah, it's always on the Discord, the, uh, the free practice uh, times if you're interested. I did surprisingly well. FP1 was essentially a washout. I got a lap in early, so I topped that. But FP3, I was second uh, doing a quality run just behind Hamilton. And FP2, I was in the top 10. So I'm cautiously optimistic that I might be able to uh, might be able to get into Q3 here and maybe score some points in the race. All right, so while we're coming around to start our first lap of Q1, I do need to say a big thank you to a new Patreon supporter, Colin Jones. Thank you. Thank you so much, mate. As I always say, it's not expected, but it is very much appreciated. If you do enjoy the content and you are able to, there is a link to the Discord down in the description. Two hands on the wheel for beginners, please. Uh, yeah, but Colin and the rest of my Patreon supporters, I couldn't literally wouldn't be able to do this without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now let's see if we can... I'm still trying to figure out the best way to get around that corner if it's to... Yeah. It's the line. I think they can probably take a number of lines and it just they all seem to be roughly the same time at the end of it when you come out I think the, the issue that I've got here and I think we'll see this is a section where I've been losing like a second a lap I've got it down to about half a second from when I first started and I think it's mostly that corner to be honest now I know Chris in the comments has been telling me for a long time but it sort of hit home again at Hungary that I've got to break early and be faster out of corners so I've been trying to do that here and I think Uh, yeah, so I think the kid will be getting a good time on this track, as I uh, just made a little bit of a mistake here, is it's going to be to do just that and not uh, and not go into corners too hot. So let's see if I can follow instructions and what I'm actually trying to do and get this done. Sorry about the flashback there. I've been doing a lot of talking this lap, so I didn't want to have to re <laughs> redo all that. Have we done enough? It is P4. That should be good enough. So there we go, not the perfect lap, but it was uh, it was good enough, wasn't it? Get us through in P12, that's all we've got to do. Uh, Gasly right up there, only a smidge. Look at that off Ricardo in first. Bottas is up there in third, so that's a shame. And uh, those eliminated, Lungard, Latifi, Zhao, Gwen Yuzhou. So I've got to say that name all in one, otherwise I get it wrong. Schwartzman, Schumacher, and Mazepin as ever is Stone Motherless. All right, let's go to Q2. Well, not the best start to Q2. We've got a break for it. We'll be sitting here for just over two minutes. All right, so here we go. We're under a little bit of time pressure, but it's only a short lap, so there, sh there should still be time to do the two laps. Let's see what we can do here. Get me down to third. Yes, there we go. Not too bad. Maybe a little bit deep in there. Not convinced that was the quickest way around that corner again. Uh, 
chance to back myself out too wide. This is not going to be the lap. Alright, so we've come back here, we've put on fresh tyres. I'm hoping I'll nail the lap first time on this set. If I don't, then it'll be a case of just sort of keep going till we do. And it might be one of these where P11 is a good, a good outcome for us, so we get the fresh set of tyres to start the race on. We're already a little bit behind. Exit. That wasn't too bad, was it? We're gaining time, gaining time, which is excellent. Alright, now for this middle sector where I really, really do struggle. Purple first sector. That's not unusual for me though. I was doing that in free practice. This is the sector though. This is the one. I lose so much time through here. So yeah, let's see if we can do a little bit better here. Another flashback there. I, I'm sorry. So we are way up, but we'd abandoned the lap at this point last time around, so you'd expect that. And let's see if we can finish it off with a little bit of style. We are going to go P4 with a purple final sector. So, I feel like rightly so, having done a flashback. I've been knocked out. It is going to be P11 for us. To be honest, I don't know if I can go that any quicker than that anyway. So that, that might just be as good as we could go. But we get fresh sires, which is not a bad thing. And we start just outside the points. We start where we finished last season. Let's see if we can uh, move forward from here. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. A fantastic effort from Pierre Gasly yesterday puts him on pole, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Norris, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo and Perez, Sonoda, Leclerc, Sainz and Oldtimer, Stroll, Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Ocon, Giovinazzi, Russell, Christian Lundgaard, and Nicholas Latifi, Joe, Schwartzman, Mick Schumacher, and Nikita Mazepin. And now it's time to head down to the track. All right, so almost the perfect scenario for us. We've moved up into the points thanks to this, uh, the penalty there for Hamilton. We've got free choice of tyre as well. 18-lap uh, race, Gasly on pole. Ugh, can Pierre get a second win for the team here, I wonder? Yeah, I mean, we could do half the race on the softs. And we did this last year, I think, didn't we? We started on the mediums and switched over to the softs. We can do half the race on a fresh set of soft tyres while everybody else is on uh, fresh mediums. I like the idea of that. We'll just need to get the elbows out at the start of the race and make sure that we're... Uh, holding off anybody behind us that is on the soft tyre. So I think that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll take a little bit of gas out because we don't need all of it. And, uh, well, let's see if we can go and get uh, double points for the team. Maybe a win for Pierre. All right, here we go. Look at that Aussie villain racing car on the front row there. It looks a little bit overcast. Let's see what sort of start we get on the medium tyre, of course. Most of those around us scroll behind us on a medium. See if we can get ourselves into turn one here. A little bit of contact perhaps there with a the Ferrari of sight. And oh, there's a car on my outside which I did not know was there. And I'm not convinced. Is there a little bit of uh, moisture on the track that's being kicked up? I really, and again almost in contact with Stroll. No damage as you can see. And Hamilton is absolutely flying. No, it's Stroll that's behind us, is it? Absolutely. wet. I don't absolutely flying and it does feel i i mean it might just be the medium tire and those behind us are for the most part on soft as i said i'm not convinced there's not a little bit of moisture in the air though it just i don't feel like i have the grip and there is maybe is there a little bit of wheel tracks behind us there hamilton is certainly all over the back of us though isn't he as he has a look to the outside we will uh, block him there and uh, just got to try and settle in here and close the gap back up to Leclerc in front of us. We have uh, gained a spot off the line. That was uh, getting ahead of Science, who has dropped back all the way to 13th. It looks like Gasly. There's definitely there's definitely some little tracks uh, we're leaving behind us, isn't there? Certainly on some of the some of the corners anyway. 
I think there is a little bit of moisture around. Let's see now if we can settle down, as I say, and close this gap to the to the lead group. And we could be on with some good points if we can do that. Going onto the soft tyres as Hamilton has another look up the inside of us. Again, definitely you can see some tracks on the on the track behind us, some wheel wheel tracks. Now this is where last lap we were uh, caught out a little bit, and we've got a little bit wide lacking grip. Ah, uh, our Hamilton strategy is available on the MFD. You dirty bastard, Hamilton! It feels completely unnecessary as we go on board. He's just hip and shoulder that's off the road. Let's have a look at it from his point of view. He's going past and. MFD for a new strategy well, option. that just felt unnecessary. We're back live now. We've lost a bit of our front wing. We've got a damp, a dampish track at least as Alonso sneaks past as I struggle for grip and downforce and everything else. And we're going to have to come into the pits as you can see Copy there. That. And we're going to have to go into the hard tyres. We're not even going to get to use the socks. So, I mean, this has just gone from bad to worse, you can see it's sneaking around. It's definitely backfired. If I'd known the track was going to be a little bit damp, then I would have started on the softs, I think. But, I mean, there was a chance for some moisture at the start of the race, as we do come into the pit lane. Well, that was going so well, wasn't it? Oh, Hamilton. I, I... I feel like that was unnecessary hip and shoulders. It's not like he was fully passed. We're going to do well to score points now on the hard tyre. From the back, we've just got to try and uh, do what we can, don't we? Complete. Go now. Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. So there we go. Now you can see Stroll had uh, pitted the lap before. Obviously, I had made a bit of contact with him and lost the front wing, and we just managed to get out in front of him. And that could be important because we've basically got a time trial now between now and the first stop to everybody else to just try and uh, and get what is essentially an undercut. But on new, I mean, not like everybody's on old soft tyres, are they? So trying to get an undercut while we're on the hard tyres and everybody else is on the soft is going to be difficult. This is, again, the part of the track. And there are definitely, let me know if you can see them as well. On the tyre, on the, you, yeah, look, you can see it there. There's definitely some moisture on the track because there are tyre tracks being left behind. Either that or it's sand. I mean, we are near the coast, aren't we, at uh, Zandvoort? But, uh, yeah, I've definitely was struggling for grip compared to the soft tyres, and I suspect maybe the harder compound on that uh, very mildly damp track is uh, certainly not been helping us. But we're pulling away from Stroll now as we come around to start lap four. And we will indeed, at this point, skip ahead now. And uh, it is now lap nine. You can see it's much more sunny. There's cars in the pit lane. And this is, well, the time trial has finished. We've dropped Stroll. He's uh, several cars back now. And we've moved up to P16. So not everybody has pitted, obviously, yet. Sonoda was ahead of us, and I think it looks like he is coming to stop. And yeah, you can see it's definitely more sunny now. The track is dry and our pace has improved and yeah it's just a matter now as I say there's still no one in front of us we haven't quite caught Mick Schumacher who was the the car the first car ahead of us who hadn't uh, made a pit stop yet so we've pulled that gap back to four seconds he's almost within sight and yeah if we can just uh, keep trying to do these time trial laps qualifying laps and do our overtaking in the pits if uh, at all possible and see where that leaves us. There's Mick Schumacher there. And see, there's going to be more cars stopping this lap, I would imagine, lap 10. We were coming in or supposed to come in lap 9. So, all the leaders, I would imagine. Then he went started on a soft tire. You can see there, Latifi's in the pits. Schumacher's come in as well. So, where does this kick us up to? A final, purple final sector there, up to P12. Ocon is in the pits, there's Esteban Ocon there, and now he's going to be on fresh mediums compared to our oldish hards. You can see though, they're still the hards still in relatively good nick. Can we go and get an overtake done here? And then Alonso, the final point, is five seconds up the road. Now he has already made his stop. Everybody I believe ahead of us now has stopped. So we've got no more freebies. And it's a shame because Ocon was behind us, wasn't he? 
at the start of the race. I think he was there. Oh, on the curb as we broke and almost threw away everything. And that's cost us a chance of DRS down this straight, which is a shame. But if we can, are we, well, are we going to be able to get DRS down the front straight? That's that's the main place to, uh, to overtake. And we know we have a good car through that last corner. And you can see it was a little bit snaky on uh, when we get the gas down. Oh, the inside curb there, that's going to hurt our acceleration as well. And that uh, is just the hard tyre. It's just not as much grip. Very close to the outside wall there. Almost like a professional driver getting that close. Another purple final sector. And Ocon feeling the pressure locks the front wheel. Now there's not really any way. Can we have a go at Esteban Ocon bent here? We're not going to do that to him. Can we get a good exit? I have kind of figured out, and you'll notice on the onboards, that if, I, if we get it down to second gear into that uh, loopy corner there with the banking, it really does help us get a nice kick out of the corner. And that comes back to Chris's uh, slow in, fast out philosophy, doesn't it, essentially. This is the corner that I really struggle to do consistently. And this one as well, actually. Let's see what we can do. We do have DRS this lap. This straight isn't really long enough unless you're all over the back of them. As we jump off board and see what sort of exit we can get here. I mean, we're right there, aren't we? We've got a good car down the straight. We're good through this last corner as well with the aerodynamics. So this should be a relatively simple overtake. We jump on the DRS, Ocon blocks to the inside, we cruise down the outside, and that should be fairly cut. We're already past him into the brake zone. And that is very much job done. And now we just need to make okay, sure work. Great pass. we don't make a mistake. Deja vu of season one coming through there, of course, when Ocon took us both out. But no such issues this season. We drive away, and it's just this middle second now. If we can stay clear of him through here, We've got four and a half seconds or so to Alonso in that final point. Are we going to be able to do that? You can see we're just slow through these this, this series of corners. Oh, I've nailed that. Look at that. Well done, Aussie villain. And then I've gone deep, of course, getting excited. Going, <laughs> coming onto the main street or the back street here. Fastest lap for Valtteri. Get it, Valtteri. You're going to win the Mark rivalry, mate. The car in front is 4.8 seconds. We just saw a little flash of Alonso there, I think, and I got excited again and ran over the curb coming into that corner. But we've got, what, five or six laps here? Five laps, really. To try and chase down essentially five seconds. We need a second a lap over the medium fired Alonso. Are we going to be able to do that? That is We're the big question, of course. So we skip ahead to the final lap. It is 1.7 seconds. You can see we're tantalizingly close to Alonso, but the hard tire is just not quite allowing me to, well, it's fading as well. I mean, we've essentially done the entire race on the tire and it's just not quite, we're catching him slowly. And the medium tire, you can see we've dropped a lot. We've dropped Ocon by four seconds. So the medium tire is going off at a quicker rate than our hard is, but we're just not able to. But while we're uh, futilely chasing down Alonso there, we'll go ahead, because Pierre Gasly, coming through the final few corners, is in the lead of the race. Bottas is behind him, but Esteban, uh, what's his name? Pierre Gasly, comes around the final corner, and it is going to be a victory for Aussie Villain Racing, only the second in the team's history. The first for Pierre, well done. Go on, Pierre! That is very, very exciting news for the team as uh, I come through the final few corners here now. And Alonso is just... He's, it's tantalizing, isn't it? Realistically, we probably would have needed another five or so laps to catch him and then have a chance to be close enough to pass him. Uh, what is it with this track in the 11th? That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part four, mate. Well, what a thrilling end to an incredible Grand Prix weekend. Our top three finishers should be incredibly happy with what they were able to achieve out there today.
I thought there was no need to do that. You were getting past anyway. What do you mean hungry? Oh, yeah, I did kind of run you off, didn't I? What are you wearing anyway? Did you race in that? Well, first of all, fantastic that Pierre Gasly got the win for us. A second win for the team. That is brilliant. I understand what happened with Hamilton, but I feel like it was completely unnecessary. I, I mean, he was going past. He did not need to hip and shoulder me, and it's a shame he didn't lose his front wing as well, to be honest. But considering we weren't ever on the soft tires, and we also had the extra couple of seconds in the pit stop uh, having to change the wing, I think, I think we probably could have got... 8th or so, maybe, we got ahead of Gasly, uh, maybe that's that's half out, let's take 15 seconds off, so maybe not, but uh, we certainly would have been ahead of Alonso, and I suspect we would have been a lot closer to Charles Leclerc as well, uh, but there we go, these things happen, I put plenty of guys in the wall, haven't I, so I can't really complain, live by the sword, die by the sword, but Gasly moves up to 4th in the championship, I fall behind Daniel Ricciardo, which is a bit of a shame in the uh, Australian battle there, and Hamilton is still behind me, as he should be after that move, and as for the team's championship, well, Ferrari look a distant, distant fifth, and McLaren is still there, only, what's that, 9, 11 points ahead of us, something ahead of us, 9 points ahead of us, so, if I can get my act together and score some points, we might, uh, we might have a chance at third in this thing, you never know, but anyway, well done to, yeah. So there we go, Bottas is once again imperious, unbelievable that he's, uh, come up as brilliantly as he has, so we've lost this Ferrari, we haven't, but there we go, that will do it for today, if you have enjoyed that, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe if you are new, of course, and yeah, I mean, in the end, it was a bit of a boring race for me, wasn't it? Most of the overtaking took place in the pits. And uh, yeah, it was just head down, ass up, trying to race our way back, which in the end, for the second year in a row, we fell one place short of. But uh, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth. Hamilton got driver of the day as well, wasn't it? But anyway, we'll be back next time. It'll be the Italian Grand Prix. I should be a lot more competitive there, I think. And uh, well, Gasly will be the uh, defending race winner. So could we be on for more big points in Italy? We'll find out next episode. Take care.